one is um, my mother, Maggie, Maggie Haley, who was a, is a survivor. She was in the second tower that morning in the uh, 101st floor, and when she first got to the, her job, um, the first tower hit and rocked the other one. And the speakers uh, in, the, in her office announced for everyone to go back to their desks and stay there, but of course, my mother never does what she's told. So she grabbed a couple of other girls and said, we're going to heck out of here. So the second part of my piece is my mother's um, recollections of some of the people uh, that she knew there at the office that, that were... Um, um, I guess it's hard to say what word it is that happened. Lost. Lost. Thanks. It's the easy word. Lost. And um, then I'll throw in just a, a little something um, of one of my compositions. And I just want to let you, uh, everybody know that I just uh, recorded a, a choral project that I wrote, and it will be out. KimCalessi.com. Okay, and now we'll, um, I'll start with the introduction and segue right into Kim. <clears throat> I was in town on 9-11, but some weeks later, flying to Italy in early October, I wrote the first of what became a trilogy that you will hear tonight. The second I wrote during my layover in Brussels, and the last a few days later in Florence, where my youngest brother lives. The first in the trilogy was inspired by an apparition seen on Court Street in Brooklyn a few hours after the tower fell, and I have asked Kim to take the poem and make it, use it as lyrics to create her own melody and make it into a song. And I haven't heard it yet myself, so I'm all excited. This is what inspired that. A handsome young man, impeccably dressed, right arm hanging down, gripping a leather briefcase. Wordlessly, he passed us by, eyes glazed, a vacant stare, looking neither right nor left. No doubt heading home on Court Street in Brooklyn. Face, hair, business suit, briefcase, all dusted, a chalky white. And if you want to follow along, the words are on the back of the program. <laughs> Oh, 
room. One floor, one on one. They slowly enter through the door, not knowing I will not see them anymore. First Lily and my friend, with toothy smile and loving heart. The rain looking so beautiful, dressed in black and white. Angelic eff effervescent, skin so fair. With a secret for me to share. Abby, colorful clothes, always talking of her son and of her special one. George with his big smile, always willing to help a spirit like a child. John and Chuck all say their good mornings. Then there's Jim, so handsome and calm, tall and slim. Jean comes rushing through the door, big eyes smiling, dancing feet like they kiss the floor. And Brian, so warm and cuddly, didn't know him very well. Then sauntering and handsome, inclined, quiet, thinker with head bent down low, moving very slow. And Kathy, always smiling, waves her hello, a busy day on the go. Laura, long hair flowing, prints and radiates. Newly married, so much love for her teenage son. And always rushing, a wave of kind hello. Proud father, loving husband. Don, quiet manner. Lynn, handsome with a dazzling smile. Donnie and Dave. Many people I like greeted that day.